It was Becky McLean, M C L A I N. I got exposed from a genetically engineered virus and uh, became very ill, and it, I got in a court battle trying to get exposure records for my health care, and I was declined basically as trade secrets superseded my rights to get health care. And it's been a battle since 2003, and it continues to be a battle. I won uh, a lawsuit on a civil claim, but it's in appeals right now. And uh, the, the most horrid thing is though bio, biotech workers do not have any rights for safety, and they don't have rights to get exposure records for health care. And that is a concern for all people uh, in America, uh, because there's consequences to public health and safety. And um, I appreciate all my friends being here and supporting me. Your exposure took place right here at the security facility? It did, down the street in one of the bio labs. And how long ago was that? That was in 2003 I was exposed. And, and, um, uh, very, very ill after exposure for several Ill, uh, several years. I still, unfortunately, have some uh, effects of it, but as you can tell, I'm a, I'm a lot better. But um, uh, it was a horrid experience, just a horrid experience, and it definitely has public health and safety implications regarding release of biological uh, uh, infectious agents and not biocontaining them. Uh, the issue that biotech workers have rights, that has not been at all uh, remedied. And especially getting, getting records so we can get health care after a biological exposure. And these biological exposures, first and foremost, should not occur. Biological agents should be biocontained. If they're not biocontained, it's sloppy science and it's bad business. When you are exposed to a biological agent, you need to know the identity of what they exposed you to. And um, that's the problem. We do not have rights to these records so we can get he directed health care for illnesses occurring from um, uh, exposure to biological agents. Uh, they claim trade secrets. So trade secrets, secrets supersede uh, an individual or biotech worker's right to get health care after a biological exposure. Uh, occupational biological exposure. It's a human right. Uh, I'm a worker. I was doing my job. I was reporting that there was unsafe work em environment. Uh, they basically told me to go to hell and then they exposed me to genetically engineered virus. Well, we should have rights to those records to know what we were exposed to so we can get directed medical care. I mean, that's just the basic, the basic remedy, first and foremost. I had worked here for almost 10 years. I was a scientist, a uh, molecular biologist working in, in an embryonic stem cell laboratory. A cutting edge science. The judge in the uh, first case in the district court, after the trial was over, and I was successful in my trial, she recused herself yeah. with the conflicts of interest with Pfizer, with, with Pfizer basically. What conflicts of interest? Well, we couldn't get many details. They wouldn't allow us to get any, a little bit obscure, but one thing is that her husband was uh, hired Pfizer's attorneys, had, uh, was having Pfizer's attorneys. And there's other, other issues. He was on boards, I believe, with some of Pfizer uh, executives. And they had a relationship. So they're funny. appealing your case? Yes. Why? Uh, I don't know. They just, they're trying to, you know, say the, the citizens of Connecticut and the jury were wrong. And, and what's interesting, we didn't even get to present uh, the majority of our case. It was excluded. The judge would not allow it in. So if they would have heard all the case, I'm sure. They, uh, they ignored the complaints. I, I begged for them to go in and do a safety inspection and they, they would not do one. Uh, they kept everything secret and then they just threw my case out. They threw my case out. So uh, for, no, for no legitimate reasons, they wouldn't tell me. I mean, it was a fiasco. If people would realize that what's going on with OSHA, uh, unbelievable. And then now we're trying to do an inspection of why they didn't go in and do, and do something and, and someone has gone in and selectively destroyed my, my case file at OSHA under David, David Michael's rule. I mean, it's a, a cover-up. A cover-up of not protecting the public. And why is this of concern to the public? Well, a release of, of uh, human infectious biological agents that are not biocontained and uh, that 
workers cannot get a safety forum to correct problems that could you know, harm the public, harm them, harm your co-workers and harm the public. Uh, it's, it's unbelievable. It's just unbelievable. Why would the safety director here of this Groton Pfizer facility say they don't do risk managements? Uh, because there's no regulations for them to mandate that they do in risk assessments because we found out that they did not do an adequate risk assessment on uh, these human infectious agents, genetically engineered agents that they're making and um, they don't have any regulations to mandate that they do. It's a private, private industry is uh, really not regulated regarding these issues. Many of the employees here, or some of them might have been infected, but it seems like there's privacy, people are secretive, and people are intimidated. Do you think people are afraid here to speak out about what's going on? Oh, by all means. The, the people in my department, uh, literally, uh, one came up to me and said, I've got uh, a wife and uh, kids, and I, and I cannot afford to get fired. And I, I saw it, and I heard it, and it was a lot of pressure on people. And, you know, if people come forward and tell the truth, you know, they're going to get fired. And that's, you know, people need a job. It's a horrible situation. It's a horrible situation. And it doesn't have to occur. Bad safety is bad business. And that's, that's the bottom line. Well, some have said, including CNN, that maybe Pfizer is too big to nail. What do you think about that? I think it's ridiculous. And I think it is, it's un-American. Uh, these corporations are getting away basically with murder. Uh, you know, they, they purport legally that they're persons, so they have legal rights to be persons, but they're not prosecuted as uh, we would be if we did what corporations did. And it's uh, un unbelievable. I mean, what's going on uh, in this country regarding individual rights, public rights, the lack of them, uh, superseded by corporation rights, is it's un unbelievable. Now, the uh, uh, Workers' Compensation Board, you went to them to get your records. What did they tell you? Uh, at the time, we uh, were in a deposition to try to get my exposure records so I could get health care. And remember, I did have a doctor's, even a doctor's request to get them. Workers' Comp said that they did not have jurisdiction to get those records. And so, again, I, uh, uh, through all this, I never got directed health care. I never got a penny paid uh, for... Uh, the, my illness that, that occurred in very, a lot of emergency room visits, hospitalizations, and not a penny uh, the, did, the, did the corporation have to pay, Pfizer have to pay, nor was there any legal remedy for me to, to get that remedy. There's no legal avenue to get the, that remedy uh, for, in regards to my health. Now, I did win a case on discrimination, Pfizer willfully and wa uh, wantonly. Uh, discriminated and retaliated against me for raising safety issues. I did win that, but that did not include uh, anything to do with my illness. So, so you're saying you have a genetically engineered disease or a genetic disease that you received here at Pfizer? Yes. This, uh, this facility here, this laboratory, and yet Pfizer is not responsible for you getting that disease? That's what they, that's, they're saying Yes, that's basically what happened. I was exposed to a genetically engineered virus, and they had told me initially when I was exposed that it wasn't a human infectious agent. So I was getting sick, and I, and I, didn't, I didn't really connect the dots until I, uh, on a doctor's report, uh, they wrote that I had a post-viral syn syndrome. So I went back and I said, hey, Pfizer, you know, tell me exactly what this virus was you exposed me to. And uh, I did get a little bit of information, and I found out it was a human infectious agent, an infectious agent that caused the, the type of um, symptoms that I was uh, exhibiting. So I had a clear etiological link uh, and, uh, you know, documentations that I was exposed, but no legal remedy. And then most injured workers don't. If you get ill on the job from exposure, chemical exposure, biological exposure, a sick building exposure, you will not get workers comp and you, you could lose your home. You could lose your home, you could lose your job, you get so sick. It's a very serious issue and something needs to be done. And you're working on developing a national network with biotech workers and other workers? Yes, uh, a national injured workers network uh, throughout the nation. This is not only occurring in Connecticut, it's occurring throughout the nation that injured workers are not getting their their uh, qu uh, quality medical care or fair compensation, uh, treated with a lack of human dignity, uh, privacy. We are uh, uh, men parked in front of our houses and uh, private eyes coming after us for, for, for becoming ill or for raising safety issues. It's, it's just unbelievable.
So, um, you think these executives here at Pfizer should be held accountable for what they've done to you? Yes, I think someone should be held accountable for sure. And and, and I went all the way up to the, to the top executive, and they're they're. Uh, what did that executive say to you? Well, their principle that they told me was that. Pfizer operates on what's legal and not necessarily on what is safe. And seeing that this uh, this uh, biotechnology in private industries has no regulations, they can do what they want. And uh, sure enough, they did what they want. They can make people sick, and there's nothing you can do about it. You think this little rally here is going to have an effect on them? I don't know. I don't know. I think it's wonderful that people here in Connecticut are, are stepping out and supporting these issues. Uh, I, I will be doing it in other areas uh, because this doesn't only affect me, this affects all workers in Connecticut and, uh, and as I said, all, in, all workers throughout the United States are not getting appropriate health care for their injuries or fair compensation. Do you know about the case of Becky McLean? No. You ever heard of her? No. Are you with security? Yeah. You don't know, you haven't heard of Becky McLean? I don't want to be recorded. Oh, you My name is Bill Clark. Uh, I'm an injured worker from Connecticut, and I'm here for one small matter, and that's Becky McLean's plight. It takes a lot of gumption for a company that is in the business of trying to make people better to have absolutely no concern about an employee's welfare being hurt on the job. And hurt doesn't mean a broken arm or a, a severed artery. It means being exposed to pathological liars and pathological virus, viruses and whatever. So uh, microbes be damned, they should give the information that she needs to get better. Oh, I'm Linda Palermo. I'm here because I feel I should give support to Becky McLean for what she has gone through and what she has been denied as a result of having a system that really doesn't care about injured workers. When you care, you help. If you don't care, you just don't do it. You just sit there and roll over and go with the flow. I just wish we had a better workers' compensation system in the state of Connecticut and that all of their ills would be cleaned up with this present administration and I also wish Becky the very best of luck with whatever her plight is to help her get her goal of satisfaction. Why are you here today? For workers' comp rights. I was working for a company and I got hurt and then I found out they didn't have workers' comp insurance. They said I was an independent contractor. So you feel that this is a problem all over? All over the country. A lot of the companies, they set up things to save money or whatever they do. I mean, we should all be protected under under workers' comp. I don't, you know, it doesn't matter if you're a contractor or, or, or under workers' comp or whatever. You should have all the same rights everywhere. Beverly Herbert, I'm here because I want to stand up for injured workers. They have not been getting justice, and we need to let the public know what's going on and educate the public. And you yourself were harmed? Yes, I was injured at uh, one of the uh, prisons in um, Connecticut and have been denied workers' comp, and as a result, it's been hard for me to live and get well. Injured worker of 20 years in the state of Connecticut, and 20 years. I've had maybe 20 hearings, 22 lawyers, 25 doctors, and I've received dime none, not one penny. In 2005, I paid $30,000 for my own surgery so I could be out here to support the injured workers of Connecticut. Why don't you, has OSHA ever inspected these facilities, these laboratories, since there have been releases of biological materials? As I said, no. Uh, we have tried to figure out why they haven't gone in there, but uh, we're, n we're not getting any clear response of why they have not gone in there to do a safety inspection. And th this was not just hearsay, these were documentation of people falling ill and uh, documentation of biocontainment issues that, that 
uh, biological agents weren't biocontained appropriately. So other people are getting sick at this facility and OSHA knows about it, but they have not done an inspection? That's true. And if, did you raise this with David Michaels, the director of OSHA? I did, and he said, well, let's look into it and get your, your record. And then when we went in to look at, uh, to get my case record, someone had gone in and selectively deleted my, case, my federal case record at OSHA in trying to cover up why, um, you know, the, the question is, why wouldn't OSHA do a lawsuit, uh, do a, uh, an inspection, and why did they throw out my discrimination case when I won at, uh, on the civil level? It's because... You know, the OSHA didn't want, it's a power conflict of interest. Uh, OSHA and Pfizer ha must have a relationship of some sort, and that's what we want to find out. And records are destroyed. And also, you, some personal records of yours, lawyer, client records were taken and distributed? Yes. When I went to my first OSHA uh, interview, I had a lot of uh, paperwork with me because you you know you need to tell the truth and sometimes I need to look and make sure I have the specific dates right and everything and we went on a lunch break and I was taking my all my notebooks with me and the inspector said oh leave your notebooks here they'll be safe they'll be safe well when I was gone at lunch she took my all my attorney client privilege documents which are privileged and she copied them, and, she, and eventually Pfizer got hold of all those prior to trial. So uh, again, uh, unethical, illegal uh, behavior from from OSHA. And what did Pfizer accuse you of? Well, they accused me that I was out to get money. And what was interesting is that when uh, I went to OSHA, they, they OSHA said, "Oh, we could settle this. T tell me what you want to settle with." And I said, "Hold on, this is a." This is a health and safety issue. This is not about money. I, you, you haven't even gone and do an inspection. I, the, there's no. Uh, why would we put money on the table? You, this is a safety issue. This is about protecting me, about protecting my coworkers and, and, and the public. And eventually, the investigator uh, came to me and said, if I didn't give him give her a settlement offer, they would throw out my case. Literally threatened me. And then when I had to give them a settlement offer, then they said I. I was out to get money. So they were using, being very, you know, manipulative to try to uh, manipulate my file to, to look like I was out to get money. And this inspector at OSHA, who was this? And Marche Bryant. And now I think she works for, um, I think, USDA. You think she should be held accountable for what she did? I think she should be held accountable. I think she should definitely be under the microscope for what she did and also I mean what uh, this is this is a public matter people raise issues the safety issues this is new state-of-the-art biological uh, manipulations and creating genetically engineered uh, agents and there's no inspection and there's a big cover-up and stealing my uh, attorney-client pr privileged documents and then destroying my record so no one, if a reporter came and tried to figure out what happened, you couldn't, the, the, there's no trail of, of what OSHA did. It's ridiculous. It's, it's, it's amazingly ridiculous. I, it's, I can't believe we're in America and it's, you think you, this would happen in some sort of third world, you know, non-sophisticated country. But no, it's happening here. It's all about big money, of course. Biotechnology is big money now. Uh, you know, gold promises delivered, to, but it's all about money. It's all about money. Okay, and you're going to continue this fight? Yes, I'm going to continue. I'm an advocate for public health and safety. I'm an advocate, uh, of course, for biotech workers' rights and for all injured workers' rights. Uh, this is not just about biotech workers. This is about injured workers throughout the United States are not getting their health care no fair recompense for for their injury. A lot of them are being uh, put on Social Security at the public's expense when the company should be paying for uh, their injury. So it's a, it's this is a major problem. It's a complex problem, but we are now trying to come out and start talking about this so the public can understand a little bit better about how it's not good for our country. It's not good for our country not to take care of our workers.